today's episode of Solve Mysteries, we're going to be diving in into a case from America during the early to mid 1900s known as the Giggling Nanny. What's interesting about this case is that an innocent looking woman who has been through five marriages was known to have killed four of her five husbands along with her mother, her sister, her grandson, and her mother-in-law through unknown various methods. So, who is the Giggling Nanny? How did she kill her victims? Why did this woman specifically try to target her husbands as opposed to going for random victims? Also, are we dealing with a potential serial killer? These are questions that we'll be answering as we dive deep into the clues of this case. Let's get into this case now. Born on November 4, 1905 in Blue Mountain, Alabama, now part of Anniston, Alabama, Nancy Hazel, who also goes by Nanny Doss, was brought into this world by her mother, Louisa Lou Holder, and her father, James F. Hazel. Nanny was one of five children and had one brother and three sisters, but her childhood life was nowhere close to sunshine and rainbows as both Nanny and her mother hated James, who was a controlling father and husband. It was said that James would often force his children to work on the family farm instead of attending school which has resulted in Nanny's poor academic performance. At age seven, while the family was taking a train to visit relatives in southern Alabama, Nanny hit her head on a metal bar on the seat in front of her when the train suddenly stopped. For years after that accident, she suffered severe headaches, blackouts, and depression. She blamed these and her mental instability on that accident. During her childhood, her favorite hobby was reading her mother's romantic magazines and dreaming of her own romantic future, and it was known that while reading these magazines, her favorite part was the Lonely Hearts column. However, Nanny's father forbade Hazel sisters from wearing makeup and attractive clothing as he believed it would prevent them from being molested by men, as well as enforcing strict rules to not attend any dances or any social events. Nanny was first married at age 16 to Charlie Braggs, her co-worker at Linen Factory. With her father's approval, they married after four months of dating. Braggs was the only son of a single mother who insisted on continuing to live with him after he married. Nanny later wrote, quote, I married, as my father wished, in 1921 to a boy I only knowed about four or five months who had no family, only a mother who was unwed and who had taken over my life completely when we were married. She never seen anything wrong with what she'd done, but she would take spells. She would not let my own mother stay all night." End quote. Bragg's mother took up a lot of his attention and limited Nanny's activities. The marriage produced four daughters from 1923 to 1927. The stressed out Nanny started drinking, and her casual smoking habit became a heavy addiction. Both unhappy partners suspected each other, correctly, of infidelity, and Bragg's often disappeared for days on end. In 1923, the couple lost their two middle girls to suspected food poisoning. Soon after, Braggs took their firstborn daughter, Melvina, and fled, leaving newborn Florine behind. Bragg's mother died not much later, and Nanny took a job in cotton mill to support Florine and herself. Braggs brought Melvina back in the summer of 1928, accompanied by a divorcee with her own child. Braggs and Nanny soon divorced, with Nanny taking two girls back to her mother's home and it was mentioned by Braggs that the reason he left Nanny was because he was frightened of her. Her second husband was Robert Franklin Harrelson. They met and married in 1929 and they lived in Jacksonville with Melvina and Florine. After a few months of living together, she discovered that he was an alcoholic and had a criminal record for assault. Despite this, the marriage lasted 16 years. Melvina gave birth to Robert Lee Haynes in 1943 Another baby followed two years later, but died soon afterward. Exhausted from labor and groggy from ether, Melvina thought she saw her visiting mother stick a hat pin into the baby's head. When she asked her husband and sister for clarification, they said Nanny had told them that the baby was dead, and they noticed that she was holding a pin. The doctors, however, couldn't give a positive explanation. The grieving parents eventually drifted apart, and Melvina started dating a soldier. Nanny immediately disapproved of him, and while Melvina was visiting her father after a particularly nasty fight with her mother, her son Robert died mysteriously under Nanny's care on July 7, 1945. The death was diagnosed as asphyxia from the unknown causes, and two months later, Nanny collected the $500 life insurance she had taken out on Robert. So at this point of the timeline, Nanny Doss has possibly killed two children. 
Then later in 1945, Japan surrendered to the Allied powers at the end of World War II, and Harrelson was among the robust partiers who had survived the war. After an evening of particularly heavy drinking, Harrelson came home drunk and raped Nanny. The next day, she discovered Harrelson's corn whiskey jar buried in the ground as she tended her rose garden. The rape had been the last straw for her, so she took the jar and topped it off with rat poison, and as a result, Harrelson drank the poison liquor without knowing and died the following evening. Nanny then met her third husband, Arlie Lanning, through another Lonely Hearts column of the newspaper while traveling in Lexington, North Carolina, and married him three days later. Like Harrelson, Lanning was an alcoholic womanizer. However, in this marriage, it was Nanny who often disappeared and for months on end. But when she was home, she played the dotting housewife, and when he died of what is said to be a heart failure, the townspeople supported her at his funeral. Was this another murder that was done by Nanny Doss herself? At this point, no one has suspected anything. However, soon after Arlie's death, the couple's house, which had been left to Lanning's sister, burned down. The insurance money eventually went to Nanny, who quickly banked it, and after Lanning's mother died in her sleep, Nanny left North Carolina and ended up at her sister Dovey's home. And like her past victims, Dovey was mysteriously bedridden soon after Nanny's arrival with an illness and eventually passed away. Looking for yet another husband, Nanny joined a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club and soon met Richard L. Morton of Jamestown, North Carolina. They married in 1952 in Emporia, Kansas. Like her past husbands, Richard didn't have a drinking problem, but he was an adulteress and enjoyed having affairs with other women. Before she poisoned him, she poisoned her mother, Louisa, in January 1953 when she came to live with them and couldn't bear having her inside their home. Morton was then found dead three months later on May 19, 1953. Nanny finally married Samuel Doss of Tulsa, Oklahoma in June 1953. Doss was a Nazarene minister who had lost his family to a tornado in Madison County, Arkansas. Samuel disapproved of the romance novels and stories that his wife adored. In September, Samuel was admitted to the hospital with flu-like symptoms. The hospital diagnosed a severe digestive tract infection. He was treated and released on October 5th, but Samuel mysteriously died on October 12, 1954. Nanny apparently killed him that evening in a rush to collect two life insurance policies that he had taken out on him. And because of this sudden death, it alerted his doctor who ordered an autopsy, and the autopsy later revealed a huge amount of arsenic in his system. Nanny was finally promptly arrested. Doss eventually confessed to killing four of her husbands, her mother, her sister, her grandson, and her mother-in-law. And although the state of Oklahoma centered its case only on Samuel Doss, Nanny Doss was prosecuted for other cases by J. Howard Edmondson, who later became the governor of Oklahoma. She pled guilty on May 17, 1955, and was sentenced to life imprisonment rather than receiving the death penalty due to her sex. Doss was never charged with the other deaths like her two grandchildren, but Doss eventually died from leukemia in the hospital ward of Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965. Hence why we can declare this case to be solved. Hey guys and gals, this is Mr. Shin Ramen, and I just want to thank you for making it this far. Did you enjoy the video? If so, it would be greatly appreciated if you can leave a like on this video and subscribe to this channel for more future content. Till next time, stay safe and stay scared.